So let's discuss discrete time signals. And a very important signal, and we use n for the integer counter, where we had time in continuous time, we had t in continuous time, now we've got n in discrete time, it's just integers, and we use square brackets for discrete time signals, that's the convention. Uh, and the very important signal is z to the power of n, where z equals r e to the j omega. So why is this such an important signal? Well, let's write this out. Uh, this equals, if we plug this z in to here, z to the n, we've got r to the n times cos of omega n plus j of sine omega n. And when we look at it like this, uh, we can see functions that we're very familiar with from continuous time as the important basis functions, the cos wave and the sine wave, which if you put them in continuous time, if you put them into a linear system, then they come out of the linear system at the same frequency. They have their amplitude changed and their phase changed, or they may have them changed, but the frequency remains the same. And the same thing holds in discrete time. Uh, let's just view these as functions. I always like to look at equations as actual functions. So let me just plot this function here. I'm just going to plot the cos component here, uh, the real part. So this is a function of n in discrete time. It only exists at integer values. Uh, so this is a function, a cos wave form uh, like this. Um, which we can plot out like this, for example, at this frequency, plotting it for one example frequency. Um, it's a, it only exists at those times, um, and it's a cos waveform. That's this function here. Okay, that's what that looks like. And let's visualize, and of course it continues on, and it has the negative values as well, uh, and so on. Uh, so this is the cos component. Now let's plot this r to the n component just to see what that is like. And r to the n is an interesting one. Uh, I'm going to plot it for a value of r, uh, which is between 0 and 1. If you uh, leave it for you to think about what happens when r is less than 1, uh, and in fact I'll tell you what happens, but it's important to look at it, it it means that you oscillate every integer between positive and negative because it's r to the n. So when n is even, you will have a positive if r is negative, uh, and but when is n is odd, you'll have negative. So the function will go positive and negative if r was negative. But for these values of r, uh, it's what we're more familiar with. This is then r to the n. As n increases, uh, this is a decreasing uh, if it's in this range, r is in this range, this is then a decreasing exponential function. Um, and of course negative as well, so um, it's this function here. So this is the r to the n function, and so this is r to the n, and if we've, when we're looking here in our function we wrote down at the start, uh, this, if we have, we've got r to the n times the cos, so we'll be multiplying these two functions at every value of n. And so if r equaled 1, then this would be a constant, and then you just simply have the cos wave. So if r equals 1, then you just have the cos wave form. And these, of course, cos wave forms, as we're becoming familiar, are very important in, uh, in linear systems. Uh, let's write down what happens if you put this function into a, this signal, into a linear system. Well, it's a convolution, and so you have the output is the convolution of the input with the impulse response. So if we put xn equals zn, then I, I won't do all of the maths, but we can show that this equals, uh, from the convolution, uh, k equals minus infinity to infinity of h of k uh, times z to the minus k times z to the n. So we put z to the n into the linear system 
and z to the n comes out of the linear system multiplied by a term which is independent of n. This term here, you can see in the brackets here, it does not depend on n. So this waveform has, goes in and comes out multiplied by a factor which does not depend on n. And this term actually we can call and we call the Z transform of the impulse response H. So we define this term to be the Z transform. So just as in continuous time, the COS waveforms and weighted versions of them with R to the N, the COS waveforms are basis functions of linear systems. And what that means is that if you put one into a linear system, it comes out of the linear system, maybe with its amplitude and phase changed, but not its frequency. And this, this function here, the h to the z, is a function of z. Don't forget z is, includes e to the j omega, so it's a function of the frequency. So just like the uh, Laplace transform and the Fourier transform, uh, there's, a, the, of course, a very strong relationship between the two. Uh, and uh, just like those in continuous time, in discrete time, we have a transform which depends on the frequency.